In this video, I want to explain overmethylation, its symptoms, how to diagnose it correctly, and also the right nutrients and supplements that benefit overmethylators. As you will see, there is a lot of bad info about overmethylation online, so we will also debunk a few myths along the way. First things first, what even is overmethylation? To understand overmethylation, you need to understand methylation, which has become sort of a buzzword in nutrition and biohacking communities. Methylation really only describes the addition of a methyl group to other molecules. A methyl group is made up of one carbon atom and three hydrogen atoms. And you can think of methylation as an on-off switch that your body uses to regulate certain processes. For example, methyl groups can be added to enzymes, hormones, neurotransmitters, and even your DNA. Doing this will then change the function of that molecule. And it's important for energy production, mental health, and the copying of your DNA. Examples of methylated processes include the conversion of serotonin to melatonin, the synthesis of creatine, and also the activation of certain vitamins like folate and vitamin B12. So methylation is really one of the base functions of your body and it happens millions of times in every cell of your body. But there can be issues, which brings me to overmethylation and overmethylators. The terms refer to higher than optimal levels of methylation happening in someone's body. And it's usually used for people with a genetic predisposition for this. But theoretically, you can also over supplement methyl donors, which then leads to overmethylation in the short term. The result is too much methylation taking place, which can lead to all kinds of symptoms as well as a tendency for certain diseases. The most well-studied relationship is between overmethylation and mental illness. And on average, overmethylators tend to have high neurotransmitter levels. So high serotonin, high dopamine, and high adrenaline. Excessive neurotransmitter levels can lead to anxiety and panic disorders, sleep problems, and even depression, which we usually associate with low neurotransmitter levels. Because of their high baseline serotonin, overmethylators also usually do worse on SSRIs, which just further spikes their already excessive serotonin. And often they don't tolerate antihistamines because their histamine is already low, since methylation breaks down histamine. Other symptoms and health issues overmethylators tend to have include sensitivities to foods and chemicals, heavy body hair, an absence of seasonal allergies due to their low histamine, a high pain threshold, and also a tendency for hyperactivity and overall high energy levels. In terms of common character traits of overmethylators, we have high artistic or musical abilities, being academically underachieving even though they can be highly intelligent, being not very competitive in sports or games, and oftentimes having a low libido. Of course, never use these symptoms to self-diagnose yourself with overmethylation. Which brings me to the next part of this video. How do you correctly diagnose overmethylation? This is where a lot of the confusion starts. When it comes to methylation issues, most practitioners will have you do a genetic test and see if certain enzymes or genes that are related to methylation, such as MTHFR, COMT, or others, have a gene variation. If they find a gene variation, then they will assume that you have a methylation issue. The problem with this approach is that there are countless genes that affect methylation, and some gene variations might lower your ability to methylate while others can enhance it. So what you have to understand for correct testing is that we're less interested in individual gene variations and more in the net effect of all of them together. The best proxy to measure this net effect that I've seen is whole blood histamine, because intracellular histamine is broken down through methylation, like I said before. That means your methylation status and your histamine are inversely related. The higher your histamine, the lower your methylation, the lower your histamine, the higher your methylation. The following ideal range is based on the Walsh protocol, which in my opinion is the best methylation protocol, at least when it comes to methylation and mental illness. I explain the protocol in much more detail in a different video. The ideal histamine is between 40 and 70, which means that if you're over 70, you will be classified as an undermethylator, and if you're below 40, you will be classified as an overmethylator. An alternative to whole blood histamine 
is testing your SAM E S A H ratio. And in this case, overmethylators will have a high ratio. The problem with both of these tests is that they're fairly difficult to get, especially if you live outside the US, which means you have to find a Walsh trained practitioner. I have a list of the best practitioners in the world, at least in my opinion, which is part of my program. Let's now talk about nutrition and supplements. Once you're diagnosed as an overmethylator, you obviously want to know how you improve your methylation status. The goal here is to reduce the overmethylation and also reduce the excessive neurotransmitters. And in terms of diet, that means more leafy greens because they're high in folate. I will explain in a second why folate is so important for overmethylators. In terms of supplements, we have several nutrients that benefit overmethylators. The first is vitamin B3 in the form of niacin and also niacinamide. Both promote histone acetylation, which is a fancy way of saying they activate certain genes responsible for neurotransmitter reuptake. Remember, overmethylators have excessive neurotransmitter levels, so reuptake is a good thing for them. Vitamin B3 works especially well for bringing down dopamine, by the way. Niacin is also a potent methyl reducer, which means when it's metabolized in the body, it uses up methyl groups. That's why you will often find it recommended as a quick remedy for overmethylation side effects from oversupplementation. The next group of nutrients I want to look at is vitamin B9, so folate, together with vitamin B12. Folate also increases neurotransmitter reuptake. And it does this inside the cell at the level of DNA, where it takes away methyl groups and increases gene expression of certain neurotransmitter transporters. This confuses a lot of people because it also applies to methylfolate, which is often said to be one of the most potent methyl donors. This is only partially true because over time, so usually after two to three months, the neurotransmitter reuptake effect takes place and then folate becomes a methyl reducer. That's why it's so beneficial for overmethylators, and it is usually given together with B12, which is a folate cofactor. Of course, overmethylators would want to take folate in the form of folic or folinic acid and not as methylfolate. Same with B12, which should be taken in hydroxy or adenosylcobalamin form and not as methylcobalamin. Other cofactor nutrients that often benefit overmethylators in other ways include lithium, GABA, zinc, manganese vitamin B6, and antioxidants. Of course, if you are a beginner and want to get into this, please set up your nutrition and supplement program together with a trained practitioner. There is a lot you can do wrong here, unfortunately. Also, in terms of response time, it is not uncommon to feel increased anxiety for the first few weeks, and it usually takes a few months for the full effect to kick in. Great. To wrap up this video, that was probably a lot of new information and methylation is definitely a complex topic. The key takeaways are really that overmethylators suffer from too much methylation happening in their body and the diagnosis should not only be done through genetic tests, but through tests that measure the net effect of all the genes working together, like whole blood histamine or SAM-E-SAH ratio. The condition can be improved by certain nutrients that reduce methyl availability and increase neurotransmitter reuptake, like niacin, folate, and vitamin B12. I hope you liked this video, and I see you in the next one.